you got to love the Shawshank Redemption. What a great film that is. But uh, Kyle, I believe just Carl, Kyle, Carl, you just got in, I think, before of R, uh, before RF DeVries. But I reckon you were both on it at the same time. But I couldn't believe how many people got that. I thought that was going to be hard. I'm going to make it a lot harder next week. I do like these last films because, like, when a f movie starts to wrap up, I, I just blank out after that, right, waiting for the credits. So I'm normally chatting, so I don't normally get to see the last uh, the last image on the film. I'm, I'm doing this challenge. It's uh, apparent how many films end with the main character just, like, looking off into the sunset. So there's a lot of films I can't use because it's, it's the, it would just give it away straight away. Uh, and I thought that one was going to be a lot more abstract tonight, but obviously uh, it's not. Hello, Christian from Grantham. Let's give it up big time. Hello, Christian from Grantham. Now let's get cracking. Oh, bless. Hello, Spleens2 over on Twitch. Uh, so as you probably guessed by the introduction there, today is Australia Day, uh, which is a bit ironic because all the Australians that are probably watching this now, it's the next day for you. So Australia Day was yesterday for you. Uh, but me being an Australian uh, is uh, it's, it's Celebrate Day today. Um, if you didn't know I'm an Aussie, I'm not a POM. I was born in Adelaide. And I came over to England in 1978, which is why I haven't got an Adelaide accent or an Australian accent at all. Although I still use words like Drongo, the Savo and Texters. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's all cool. But uh, yeah, been having a having a bevy today, although I should be on the Castlemaine or the uh, or the Fosters, really, shouldn't I? But I'm, I'm still on the Buds on account that I've got a whole bundle of it in that fridge down there. Hello, Ollie Monopoly. How's it going? Uh, so let's tell you uh, my little monologue, uh, which is going on. Um, uh, for, for yesterday's live stream on the Patreon, it, but Patreons know about this. It was just a disaster. Everything was going wrong. Uh, Dave Phillips, I don't know if you're in here or any of the Patreons that watched last night. I couldn't go to bed until I solved the issue that we had with the Ferrari. And uh, I got it on the drill press. Simple job. Everything went together. And I put a picture up on the Patreon channel. The Ferrari is working, but we only managed to get through six stages yesterday on the Patreon channel. So next week, we're going to finish the other six stages. But uh, if you're not a Patreon, check that out on the Patreon channel. Uh, you'll, you'll have a lot of fun there. But um, that, was a, that was a stressful night. Oh, and the internet went down as well before the stream even started. So that added a load more stress. Uh, we are going to be drawing tonight the uh, Queen Anne's Revenge. We're going to be doing that in about five minutes. Um, I have been working on the Enterprise refit. I have now primed all the inside of the... Uh, oops, what was that? I thought that was a spider then. <laughs> um, I've primed all the inside of the refit. Uh, I was going to start putting the side walls on of the saucer, but I can't do that on my one because uh, I've got to put some electrics in it first. So uh, the next video that's going to come out is all going to be about the electrics, which is the thrusters, the navigation lights and the other flashing lights, all of that on there. It's all fun. Uh, and I also learned how to use, um, uh, what's it called? Adhesive, adhesive promoter. What's it called? Adhesion promoter. That's the stuff. See, I, I've been using it wrong all this time. So I have got an old model down here and I've been practicing on it. You don't use adhesion promoter like paint. I really thought you did. But you don't. If you use it like paint, you're going to have a bad time. You just spray it on like a mist. And that's it. Leave it. The lightest coat you can possibly do. And it does perfect. But I learned that the hard way on my fake bit. So I'm glad I did that before I went over to the uh, Enterprise. As you can see, it's, look, it's sitting over there at the moment. Actually, things are quite tidy in here at the moment, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so what's been going on? So uh, if I click over to um, this one here. Look, it's me on the screen. Um, Ixo Collections, as you can see, uh, we're currently doing, uh, we've finished the Peugeot, we're currently doing the Porsche 917, and we're doing the Alpine. I've had the next delivery of the Alpine through, and on the full kits, which you can see here, their newest release uh, was the Mercedes 196, as you can see there. They've got an assembled version of the Peugeot that we built. You saw the Amazon, that's now finished on the channel. And then the three new builds they've got down here uh, were the Jeep Willys, uh, the Mercedes 300 SL, and the Nissan GTR. Uh, but it's this beast here that I'm going to be starting at the end of um, February. Now, this is 1.2 meters, and I've already figured out where this is going to go. Uh, this is going to go right there. X Wings going, drill press is going, uh, the helmets are going. Once I build this up, it's going to go right up and it should touch 
just the bottom of that W there. Massive thing. But it all lights up. The lifts move. Metal. I'm going to love it. It's going to be such a great build. So I will be putting that uh, on the channel. The Jeep is April. Thank you, Eric. Uh, and it's uh, if it wasn't for Eric Le Dunois, <laughs> I really do try, Eric. Uh, we wouldn't be able to have had, uh, well, the Titanic delivered here, but we wouldn't have had the prize to give away for the Queen Anne's Revenge. And that's uh, what we're going to be doing tonight. Now, just so you know, there was 200, just over 200 entries. Uh, there was... Uh, 840 actions for those entries. So each person did four or five things, and each thing that you did on that Gleam thing gives you a prize. Now, if I show you the screen here, it does show you on here, no winners have been picked at the moment. What I need to do is just click that button there, and it's going to pick a winner. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that... Uh, oh, wait a minute. Let me get this over. I'm going to... I'm going to do that off camera and then cut straight back to it because I don't want people's personal details leaked. Um, hopefully there's no email addresses or anything like that. If there is, I'm just going to have to tell your name out. But I don't want to, uh, you know, data protection, GDPR and all of that. So uh, I think we're going to start tonight, if you are been sitting comfortably, to find out who's going to get this absolutely brilliant prize. If you're unsure what that prize is, it's uh, the Queen Anne's Revenge Blackbeard ship. Looks like this. This is pretty much how it's going to come. Look at the size of that packet. So when this comes, you've really got to take a picture of it and email it to me, please, because I want to see how this looks in someone's house. But uh, look at the detail on it. AC adapter, so I'm guessing it lights up as well. But this is an amazing prize. This is one of the best and probably biggest prizes uh, we've ever had on this channel. So thank you, Eric, for arranging this. And uh, thank you to IXO Collections, IXO pct for making this happen but uh someone is about to be very very lucky and uh i don't know who that is so are you sitting comfortably i'm gonna i'm gonna pick the winner so once again look i'm just teasing you at the moment i've got to click that button there okay so the winner is i'm clicking the button uh hold on it's gone to another screen hang on it's gone to this screen now it says uh I'm going to be drawing one winner. Yes. Okay. So let's draw. The winner is... Okay. The, um, I've, got the, I've got your email addresses here. So I don't want to display your email addresses. But if you are based in England, you are a winner. If you are based in the east of England, you are a winner. <laughs> I'll narrow it down. You are probably around about an, I don't know, about an hour and a half from me. If you are based in Norfolk, you are a winner. <laughs> the winner is Tony Abrasum. Abrasum? 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 Tony Abrasum, you are the winner. And it's going to be winging its way to Norwich. Well done. You were entry 622 that won. Uh, and I can't... Uh, I can't hide his details, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, there you go. Well done, Tony. That's brilliant. What I'll do is I'll email you, Tony. Uh, when I get the details from you, Eric, I'll um, I'll forward them over to you. Uh, but well done, Tony. Tony A Abrasum. Abrasum. I'm going to put it in chat because I'm, I'm probably butchering the name. Unless you're in here, Tony, of course. There you go. There's your name. So uh, all cool. Lou. Uh, what was that? I was, sorry, <laughs> I was reading what Lou had. <laughs> How to enter. It's already been, it already closed. It closed at midday today, Spleens, unfortunately. So uh, brilliant model, though. Absolutely brilliant. But Tony, if you are watching, you've got to send a photo when that comes. Uh, because that's just an amazing. Would a ship fit in the Nissan? It wouldn't fit. No, definitely not in my, uh, my Nissan. I have enough trouble fitting all of uh, Esther's stuff. Mrs. World Away. <laughs> Yes, I'll send that to you, Eric. Thank you so much for arranging that, Eric. That's been a lot of fun. And uh, just so you know, we've also we've also raised almost four hundred pound for the UK Parkinson's charity as well. So uh, you know, my heart goes out to each and every one of you for making that happen. Uh, and it's only January. I wonder where we can get to for December, uh, which is absolutely brilliant. But um, I, I like that. I like being able to uh, give back to the community and uh, having people like Eric making that happen was uh, it. I, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful, Eric. Thank you very much. And if I could say that in French, I would. <laughs> Tony's in the kitchen. He's probably Tony is here. Look at that. 
<laughs> well done, Tony. <laughs> now that's the way to say it. Brilliant. The problem is, Tony, this, this thing's massive. I can't wait to see where you put it. But you know what? I've got family who live in Fakenham, Cromer and Norwich Way, so you never know. If I'm down that way and I get an invite, I'll, I'll probably, I've got to say hi, because that's going to look amazing. But uh, oh, it's all good. I'm glad you're in here. That's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, what else has been going on? Let me try and have a think. Uh, yeah, you probably saw this thing that I've been watching a horror film or a horror TV series on uh, TV, which uh, it, it, it bothered me to start off with, but me and Mrs. World Away and we had a discussion about it. And that has anyone ever seen the show in the UK called Father Brown? And it stars the guy from Red Dwarf. Uh, what's the guy's name? I'm sure someone's going to tell me. Mark Williams from Red Dwarf. Uh... Let's uh, pick a picture up of him. Hang on. You'll recognise him. Look, he's uh, he's uh, that guy on the right there with the microphone. Father Brown. Okay. Right, Father Brown is based in a little fictional village in the Cotswolds. But I happen to know that it's filled in a place called Blockley. Something like that. The population of Blockley is 2,000 people. Now, in this show, everyone goes to church. So those 2,000 people go to church. Now, there's 110 episodes, and guaranteed, in Father Brown, one person dies in every episode, <laughs> right? So I worked out that in the space, because it's been going since 2014, in the space of nine years, 110 people have been killed in this little town. 6% of the population have been killed in this little village, and the father has been involved in every single one of them. Now, can you see why I think it's a horror film? <laughs> It's a horror series. The guy's either a serial killer, really bad luck, or something freaky's going on in that town. But she's devoted to it. She loves it. She loves murder mystery things and stuff like that. It's just the same with Death in Paradise on that island of Martinique or whatever it is. That Every week we watch it, there's one or two murders. And it's like, but it's always happening in the same little place. Don't the writers think about that? Thinking, it's like Santa Clara from Lost Boys. <laughs> Is it Santa Clara? I can't remember. Santa, what was it in Lost Boys? It was uh, Santa Clara, wasn't it? I don't know. I can't remember the place. The murder capital of the world. Yeah, Death in Paradise. Thank you, Pete. But that does make me laugh. I don't think they think about this. They like the whole Agatha Christie thing. Although saying that over Christmas, I did like watching Knives Out too. If you haven't seen that. I, I do like the whole, you know, the murder is in here somewhere. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everyone together and uh, make a little drama out of it. <laughs> oh, I don't understand how they work but uh, I've been having a uh, he's Rory's dad on Doctor Who oh is he? ah oh, right he's, he's in everything he just pops up everywhere uh, he's in Harry Potter as well isn't he he plays um, the Weasley's dad Mr Weasley thank you uh, Mrs Weldaway you got it <laughs> but uh, it, it just it, uh, these, these murder mysteries do do make me laugh a lot but I can't knock them. It is Santa Clara in Lost Boys. It is, yes. Excellent. I thought so. The murder capital of the world. Well, no, it's not. It's in it's in the Cotswolds, apparently. Because, you know, it got to the point where I was getting a calculator out. 5.5% of their population has died in nine years. Or been, died, been murdered in nine years. And the priest has been in every single one of them. <laughs> Midsummer Murders. Uh, yep, you're absolutely right. Ah, oh, the winner can thank... Um, uh, oh, how can I pronounce that, Eric? Gwit, gwit... Gilomi? Gilom? Gilomi? Gilom... I'm trying. <laughs> I'm sure they will, Eric. I'm sure they will. <laughs> I thought also a disproportionate number of people were killed in Miss Marple's little village. All of these shows, all of these murder mystery shows, even Vera. I mean, Vera's based in Newcastle. I think they were filming last time we were in Newcastle, weren't they, Mrs. Wilder Wayne? But, uh, and that's a police thing. But, you know, how many how many murders are there up in the North East? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It does make me laugh because, remember, this is a, a I, can't, I can't say it's a family show, but it's on, like, lunch times. So, you know, the kids go back to school and the mums and the nans sit down to watch um, Father Father Brown. I almost called it Blooming Father Ted. <laughs> All you peeps keep calling it Father Ted. <laughs> oh, bless. Hello, Adrian. How's it going? 
Santa Clara is the Lost Boys. I was asking um, Phil when I was in LA how far uh, the pier is. Because Santa Clara is a fictional place, isn't it? But where was the Lost Boys filmed? Does anyone know? I think it was too far away from where we were. Santa Carla. It was Santa Carla in the uh, in the Lost Boys. Okay. Uh, I don't know where it was filmed, though. The Santa Carla Beach Boardwalk is in front of Museum Park. Santa Cruz. It's in Santa Cruz. Okay. We didn't get to see that. <laughs> but we did get to see, you know, where Daniel LaRusso lives at the start of The Karate Kid. I'm sure um, Phil's not here tonight, by the way. Uh, Phil's, Phil's away tonight. But um, I did say to him, if we've got time, can we go to this place? And I'm pointing to a map. And he's like, where's that then? And I'm like, oh, it's uh, Tampa. Uh, it's a junction of Tang Tampa and Sequoia or something like that. So we went there and oh, I've so long wanted to go see where Daniel LaRusso lives. At the start of the Karate Kid at South Seas Apartment. And I got my picture taken there. So I was, I was over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> that made my holiday. <laughs> uh, you can get it in the US on the BBC app. It's, it, it does really well over here. To be honest with you, um, uh, Jason, everything, everything murder mystery does really well. In fact, when we went to Scotland a couple of years ago, we went to Wigtown, which is like the second biggest book place in the whole of the UK after Hay on Wye. Bookshops everywhere. And uh, they were saying that during the pandemic, the amount of sales for Agatha Christie books went completely through the roof. So I'm guessing while everyone was locked down, they just wanted a good old fashioned murder mystery. But uh, you got to love it. I mean, I, I, I until I met Mrs. World Away, I hadn't really watched any of the Agatha Christie. So when Kenneth Branagh started doing the um, uh, the uh, po oh, God, here we go again, Poirot. Uh, and he did the uh, Murder on the Orient Express. I hadn't got a clue who murdered, uh, the, who the murderer was. So uh, obviously she knows them all. So when I was watching it, I was like, oh my God. And then Death of the Niles come out. And I believe he's got, uh, he's doing another one now. Making a whole series, good old Kenneth Branagh. You notice the finished pick. The finished pick. Oh, of the Ferrari. I know. Cabot Cave is safe now that Angela Cabot Cave. What's that? <laughs> Cabot Cave. Maine, the murder she wrote. Ah, right, okay. Cove, you mean. Cabot Cove. Maine. Did I read it wrong? Cabot Cove. Yeah, I read it wrong. It's the beer. It's the beer. I've read it wrong. I never watched Murder She Wrote, I have to say. <laughs> Gilmy. Gilmy, is that right, Ian? I'm trying. I really am trying. Your father Brown might solve the murders, Julian, but don't th don't you think the police just say, how comes you are always involved? When we get involved, you're always here and you're always halfway through the investigation. It's like, I'm sure that guy shouldn't have been a priest, but I think he should have been a detective. But Gilulm. G. G. Ulm. G. Ulm. G. Ulm. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I'm hopeless. I'm absolutely hopeless pronouncing names. I tell you, is this a new trial by Hashet U96 U boat? It is a trial, not in this country though. I believe it's in Germany. Uh, Jeffrey Willits. As a matter of fact, I think it might be the full run in Germany now. It had been on trial before. Hello, Ramon. How's it going? Thank you for getting back to me after the last stream. Uh, Ramon wasn't the one who sent me the uh, the Maltese uh, night that I call the Maltese Falcon. Uh, but Ramon's over in California. And uh, we had a great chat the other day about the good old Rams. Uh, not many teams left in the uh, run-up for the Super Bowl now. But uh, looking forward to watching that, I have to say. I think at the moment, I think Eagles are going to win it. But I have got a soft spot for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I don't want San Francisco 49ers uh, to, uh, uh, to get anything. <laughs> But uh, it's all fun. And we have got the um, uh, the American football coming to London again this year. And I believe the teams are the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, the Tennessee Titans and Buffalo Bills. So that's going to be uh, fun. That's around about October time. So, Ho oh, Wayne, did you get the pictures I sent you? I don't think so. Um, 
Dave, where did you send them? On my email? And what were they of? I haven't seen anything, I have to say. Drink. <laughs> I need to drink. <laughs> You're laughing, Eric, because I'm butchering it. I really do. You need to, with, with names, people need to send them phonetically, just like Todd did, because I'm hopeless. I'm absolutely hopeless. But uh, I do try. You believe Ixo was uh, sent anywhere in the world? Well, I said they're going to be sending uh, an Eiffel Tower to me. I was going to get it this month, but unfortunately, my car, as I said, had, had to have a new clutch. It runs lovely now. It's got a new clutch, two new tyres. Oh, oh, it's lovely. And I get to do its first long journey tomorrow because I pick the kiddies up tomorrow. Uh, I'm also going to be uh, speaking to one of the area managers from Starbucks tomorrow. So if you're watching, um, hello. <laughs> I'm sure you've stalked me and you know me, I'm on here. Uh, just to talk about this toilet situation I was mentioning the other day, about the toilets are always closed in this Starbucks and I just can't figure out why. So uh, he's happy to meet me. He actually uh, invited me down there. So uh, I'm going to go early. Uh, That's why I've already done the um, tumbler. I've done the Batman tumbler for tomorrow. So uh, stages two and three. Uh, and then we're going to discuss toilets in Starbucks tomorrow. So it sounds like a little thing, but when you do a, I have to leave normally at midday and I won't get back till seven o'clock in the evening. It's a full round trip to Essex and back to Corby with this coffee break in the middle. It can be such so inconvenient. I just like to be able to get there two hours beforehand, lounge, have a coffee, perhaps play with a computer uh, and then pick the kiddies up and then come home. But uh, yeah, at the moment, I end up going about five or six different places. But uh, Albert Square seen its fair share of murders. You know what? I haven't seen EastEnders, Mark. I think Arthur Fowler was still in it when I was watching it. I don't really watch much TV. I, I do. I do like the um, the the binging on Netflix series. I've just watched. Uh, we watched Wednesday. I think that's the last one we watched. I've been enjoying The Last of Us. If anyone's watching that, uh, that's episode two. The last Last of Us is really good. And I've been working my way through some Oscar films. So I watched. Um, uh, the Banshees of Inishirin. Inishirin. That was all right. Weird film. Uh, so uh, Phil said you should watch the first one. So I watched In Bruges as well. So I watched that. And then today I watched the German film All Quiet on the Western Front. Very much like Saving Private Ryan. But um, yeah, pretty haunting that one, I have to say. I'm not a big fan of war films, I have to say. But uh, I do like to go into the Oscars having some idea of what I'm watching. Uh, cool. You remember Kenneth Moore playing Father Brown in the 19... 70s really i remember kenneth moore playing the uh wasn't he the captain on the titanic in uh a night to remember that was kenneth moore wasn't it i'm sure it was how do i know that and i'm not even 50 <laughs> have you read the michigan murders yet uh mrs world away may have i don't know she's got quite a lot of books on the go at the moment actually howard and when she's not listening to books uh reading books she's listening to them on audio books uh but there you go. Oh my god, go, go, that's like, oh my god, <laughs> gaming. I never got the full set of Eagle Moss back to the future drawing. Can you still get the rest? You will be able to from Fan Home. Uh, oh my god, gaming. If you go to uh, fanhome.com, you'll see it on there and you'll be able to start from where you left off. Uh, I think I might be doing the DeLorean again, just so you know. Uh, I just got to iron some things out and then hopefully I can do a DeLorean with no broken wheels. We'll have to see. You ordered a tin after seeing Lou's video. Well, Lou, you really had that power loader done so quick. And you know what? I like that that version that you've done there compared to the old Halicon one. Because I think we discussed it at Wonderfest. The Ripley figurine wasn't very good in the Halicon one. But it looked a hell of a lot better on that kit you had. That's a, a, an amazing kit. I really did like that. So again, peeps, if you haven't checked out um, Aztec Dummy, I normally had a link for you on here, but it's gone. Then check out Lou's site, Aztec Dummy, on YouTube. Actually, look, I'm wearing his T-shirt today, look. Um, and you'll see the power loader finished from Aliens. Brilliant, brilliant model. Uh, hello, the Tattooed Zoologist. What a name, that is brilliant. Yeah, it really helped me with Knight Rider car. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, Tattooed Zoologist. You'll be pleased to know I've got the next pack here. So uh, we're building the other seat by the look of it in the next pack. Uh, have you seen that Agora Models have got the instructions up for the New York fire truck? Pack 11 is just the diorama, nothing to do with a fire truck at all. It's just the diorama, and there's only about, I don't know, seven or eight things to do. You're just putting together three bits, putting the stairs on, which are magnetic, I believe. So you're going to have a diorama before 
the fire truck's finished. Uh, but the box looks really big and really heavy. So uh, that's on its way, I believe. See, it, it, here's another name. RF DeVries. I'm, I'm calling you DeVries. It could be DeVries. DeVries? It could even be DeVries. Makes you wonder how a town like that would survive if they killed the butcher or the baker. <laughs> Santa Clara is Silicon Valley, near, so it's more near San Francisco. My, uh, my knowledge of California now. Dylan is uh, obviously we we, we were at, um, Santa Monica. I saw Malibu. I saw downtown uh, the L.A. as in the uh, where the airport is and uh, to Torrance. I think that was the place uh, and Studio City. I saw all of that. And then we went up past Vasquez Rocks. That was excellent to some place in the desert somewhere. So that's my knowledge of L.A. at the moment. It will expand, I'm sure. I would like to take Mrs. World away in there, but uh I did promise to take her to Vegas to see all the uh, sights and sounds of uh, Vegas. Santa Cruz. Thank you, Ramon. That's the place. <laughs> but I didn't realize how big California is from the from the southern tip of California to the northern tip of California. It's so big. It's so big. Um, you did put a video up today. You were building the Porsche 917 Berg this, wasn't you? I started watching it. What's my favourite horror movie? Um, I like The Thing. Uh, 1982, John Carpenter's The Thing. I even like The Fly. Talking about uh, The Fly, Ken Spriggs has just done a fly model from the old fly. Uh, and he's put like a static grass to make little hairs. But yeah, I like The Fly. Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. Didn't like any of the others. Uh, the Exorcist. I love The Exorcist. That's it. I do like a good horror film, but I used to be really into the the gory horror, horror films, Cons Customs. I used to be uh, I used to track down the video nasties like the Burning and the Boogeyman uh, back back in the day, even the uh, Cannibal Ferox and Cannibal uh, Holocaust. Actually, I think uh, Daguerreo's de died. He died recently. But um, yeah, I do like the old band horror film, Nightmares in a Damaged Brain. <laughs> Uh, but then I was a big fan of uh, 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 Rick Baker and Tom Savini. I met Tom Savini in Watford here and he gave us a makeup masterclass as some sort of like, uh, there it was a really personal thing. It was like, there couldn't have been more than 20, 30 people. And he was giving us a masterclass on some of the Day of the Dead makeups he had done. Uh, brilliant guy to meet, Tom Savini. If you didn't know Tom Savini, he played Sex Machine in uh, From Dust Till Dawn. But uh, he's a he's a brilliant makeup artist. They deliver everywhere, but not Russia. Ixo Collections. Ah, <laughs> um, oh, there you go. Make sure that's passed on, uh, Tony. <laughs> uh, um, Eric, sorry. Uh, your son's name, Corey. <laughs> the two Corys in that film. <laughs> and your dog's Nanook. Mrs. World of Wayne loves the Lost Boys. We went to we went to the cinema to see like um, they were showing like a retro for the anniversary of the Lost Boys. And what made the film for me is not only were they playing the film on a big screen and watching the Lost Boys on a big screen, it has to be done. But they were playing the old Pearl and Dean adverts with '80s adverts before the film, which was surreal. Really did feel like you were back in time. <laughs> uh. I was just reading what you said, Howard. That's crazy. Oh, my God. We all got into a lot of things near COVID. Well, I think that's why a lot of people got back into model building and stuff. But uh, that's crazy. It would be funny to have the Leopard 286 tank delivered to Russia. Well, that's happening, isn't it? They're, they're delivering the, 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 two A's, the, the 2A tanks over to Russia now. Uh, I actually got my Pack 13 today. But I don't know if I'm going to be doing it because most of the things that were faulty or not working properly on the leopard tank i fixed so uh but the the, the box 13 is a really tiny box but i think they're now telling you in pack one that you'll get pack 13 straight away so that you can replace the parts as you go through the build if you are doing that leopard tank so mrs marple's village is st mary's mead where's that st mary's mead whitney Oxen, Oxfordshire, is that where it is? 
Wow, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. This is where Wayne says, no, women were trying to find ways to bump off their husbands during lockdown. That's why Agatha Christie was so popular. So how close did I get then, Mrs. Welder Wayne? <laughs> I bet you I was a lot closer than uh, people expect. <laughs> I'm glad I survived. <laughs> Just so you know, peeps, we uh, this weekend, uh, me, the whole family, the whole, my, my immediate family, me, Mrs. Welder Wayne and all my kids, we're doing some sort of escape room. That's all I know in Leicester. Uh, but it's teams. So we're going to have a team of boys and a team of girls. Uh, because we've got boyfriends and girlfriends and fiancés coming as well. So uh, I don't know what we got to do, but I believe we've got to escape some room and then we've got to do something in, a, in an arena, I think. But uh, that's what's happening on Saturday. So if I'm not here from Monday, I'm still in that escape room. <laughs> Cabot Cove. Thank you, Mrs. Worldaway. Am I behind on chat again? Oh my God, I'm behind on chat. Sorry, I'm really, it's the beer. I blame the beer. I'm really, I'm really... Push the button so I can get the cream of envy. <laughs> it's fiction, Wayne. No, it's not fiction. It's based. It must have been based on something. All stories must have been based on something, surely. I can't believe I'm so far behind on chat again. What is the time? Oh, my God. It's, it's only half eight and I'm already like 15 minutes behind on chat. The 49ers are cheaters. Yeah. Anyone in that division. The Seahawks are cheaters. Although the Cardinals, I think the Cardinals had a bad season this year, but not, I mean, they finished last, but I, I thought they played better than the Rams did. Uh, A14 tomorrow, Wayne. I am on the A14 tomorrow. On the way down to Brentwood. That's where this Starbucks is. It's near Brentwood. It's halfway between Brentwood and the uh, and, and East Horndon. You know you've hit the big time when you go to Starbucks to talk about toilets. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I made it my mission. That's the thing, Sophie. I've made it my mission that there's no there's no call for it. From what I understand, the laws are if you've got more than 10 seats in your establishment, you need to have available wash facilities and toilets for customers, even if it's just one that's shared between the staff. But they constantly close them. And oh, the little the things that I the wars I pick, eh? <laughs> it just drives me nuts. I, I wouldn't be surprised, Robert. The funny, funny thing is, when one time they were closed, and I happened to be going down the next day as well, when I went in there, they had completely different staff. I mean, I'm, I'm there so often now that I know the staff. I hadn't seen any of these staff before, and the toilets were open. And I was like, oh, my God. So I'm texting Mrs. Welder Wayne. I said, toilets are open. Went in there. It was lovely. Absolutely lovely. And then, and then the next time I went down there, they closed again. <sighs> <laughs> Starbucks, most expensive crab. Well, you know what? It's, it, for me, it's location, Howard, because it's on the way to picking the kids up. Otherwise, I'd go to a Costa Coffee or something like that. But they're completely out the way. Unfortunately, in Corby, if I want if I want a Starbucks here, I've got to travel three miles away for a coffee. That's why um, Mrs. Welder Wayne got me a massive bag of uh, coffee here that uh, was actually imported from California. So I got Pete's coffee. She didn't realise she got beans, so I bought a grinder as well. So she's been spending... She's like Rumpel Skiltskin with these coffee beans. I'm telling you, she's been grinding these coffee beans. So I've got a great big jar now full of coffee. But you know what? The uh, God, the house smells nice. They should they should, they should, should make candles of called ground coffee. I do like the smell of ground coffee. Ah. Uh, <sighs> Used to travel M1, A14, M11, A406, A13. You wouldn't do that now, Ian, because that A406 to A13 junction's a living nightmare. I only do that on the if the M25 and the A127's closed and the 414's closed and the A120's closed. I'd go into London on the 406. That's a nightmare road. Uh, IXO Collection's not in Macau. That's where all the casinos is, isn't it? Macau, that's a place I'd like to go. When is the big 5-0, Wayne? July the 4th. American Independence Day. I'm going to be 50. So, uh, Mrs. Welder Wayne's hopefully going to be taking me to France. Hence why I'm getting an Eiffel Tower. But uh, we'll have to see how things turn out. I'm very... I'm, I'm like water. I'm so fluid, I just go in a flow. But, uh, you know, to me, 50 is just a number, though. I'm, uh, you know... I, I don't count my wrinkles. 
But uh, it's weird seeing my Facebook uh, with all the people, because I've got a lot of uh, people that I went to school with, uh, as in junior school and high school on my Facebook and seeing they're all turning 50 now. Because I was one of the youngest in my year being born in July. And uh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> you got the first two issues of the Tumblr today. Well, issue three came out um, on Wednesday, uh, Dan. So that's in the shops as well now. But because of the way the subscriptions work, peeps who've got subscriptions should have received one and two. So I'm guessing it's going to be a little while, probably a month before you get three and four. And it's going to be like that until May. I do explain that tomorrow in the uh, in, in tomorrow's video. But you'll also notice that the um, Optimus Prime, I believe, is coming out in March from Agora Models. So there is a bit of a lull at the moment about things coming out. Uh... Are you going to mod the DeLorean? Mark, I really want to mod the DeLorean, but I'm very much aware of um, um, what what Chloe over at Model Mods is going through at the moment. So I don't know where you'd get things like the flux capacitor from now. I haven't got a clue. But uh, hopefully nearer the time, some of these people that do the mods, things like Mike Lane and stuff like that, who used to do some of the stocks for the DeLorean, you saw the, 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 the railway tracks I had, that, that business, I'm guessing, will pick up again as a, a new generation do the DeLorean. Uh, has anyone had scratches on the windows for the Batmobile and Tumblr? Does anyone know of a way of removing them? Um, I haven't really had... Uh, no, not really. I haven't had anything, Callum. I mean, would you see them, though, Callum? Because it's, it's really black. I mean, I was watching my trial. Just so you know, I've taken the trial ones down now off the site because they, they're confusing people. But they are right. The trial ones were more like a um, a polarizing lens rather than deep black. Um, I think I prefer black rather than the polarizing one. I do like that whole black look. But uh, all cool. Vegas is epic. I've been to Las Vegas twice, and so I'd like to go again. Uh, you've been watching uh, Pete Cooper doing the fire truck. I do like the fire truck, but that's up in the old man cave at the moment. I bring that down. Well, I won't need to bring it down in the next pack if it's just the diorama. Uh, I heard about the model show. That's an IPMS show, wasn't it, Chris? Uh, that I messed you about recently. Some amazing models and displays. If any of you is when I was one of the Star Wars characters. I would get. I will be going to Telford this year, Chris. But um, I think I might be bringing Mrs. World away with me as well. Uh, but November's a long time away. Uh, 101 horror movies to watch before you die. I've probably watched most of them. I do what I, I mean, I, I liked Wrong Turn, but I'm not the sort of person who will watch Wrong Turn 2, Wrong Turn 3, Wrong Turn 4. You know, just making a sequel for the ma sake of making a sequel. I mean, I can't believe they, they're going to do a sequel to Megan. They should have just left it at number one. That's it. Fine. Squid Game. You know, making another series of Squid Game. This first season was great. It, brilliant ending. Leave it. Think of something new. <laughs> Mark's mods he has to mod the DeLorean the flux capacitor supplied was rubbish it was a light bulb <laughs> everyone's like last house on the left that was one on the band list I spit on your grave was the other one as well the originals again they got remade as well didn't they <laughs> take care Lou see you later mate <laughs> um Avoid roller coaster and old lorries. <laughs> You're talking about Final Destination. Again, the first one was good, but, you know, why did I have to? I know it's a money-making thing. You know, they see success and they want to they wanna get the success back. Mainly because, like, Jaws 2, you know? Jaws was a great film. Why, why was Jaws 2 made? And then why was Jaws 3 made? And what the hell was going on with Jaws 4? Sometimes it's worth having a sequel because you're telling a completely different story like Indiana Jones. Even though Steven Spielberg hated Temple of Doom, I love Temple of Doom and The Last Crusade. I people keep telling me there was a fourth one. I don't think there was. There wasn't a fourth one. Something about Crystal Skull, but you know. Nah, I, if there was, I dreamt it because uh, in my dreams it was a nightmare and it was horrible. <laughs> Canada sending some leopards to Ukraine. Wow. They're going to have more tanks. I don't understand why they need tanks. Because I thought that they confiscated loads of Russian ones. So surely they can just use them. 
Esther's team will win. What, we're going to have a bet on it, are we? <laughs> Ball. <laughs> if they win, I'm never going to live it down. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, very distinct possibility, Paul, that that could happen. It's a, uh, to be honest with you, Ramon, I haven't got a clue. It's it's a complete surprise. So this was a Christmas present from our kids. And all we've got told is we're going to Leicester to do an escape room. Now, the last escape room we'd done, it was in an Egyptian tomb. And it had like pyramids and stuff. And we had to get out of that by opening uh, a mummy, uh, mummy, what they call them, the box sarcophagus like sort of thing. And uh, deciphering hieroglyphics and stuff. But this one, I haven't got a clue. So, And that's how I like going into it. Just not having a clue. Why am I always surprised? Because because you know what? When I first start these streams, Will, I, um, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to keep up with chat. And I'm normally good. And then I just go off on a tangent. And when I come back, I realise I'm so far behind. Always the same. But... Uh, <laughs> um, have you set up an insurance policy for Wayne? <laughs> you know, you believe chess was invented by uh, a woman. Think about it. The king is taken out by a vindictive mistress because he won't believe his wife. For <laughs> Am I going to start watching the uh, XFL American football all owned by Dwayne Johnson, his ex-wife? Um, I don't think... Can we get it over here, Paul? You know what? Because I was really interested in watching the college league. Because when I was in America, God, 2007... I was really interested in watching the college football because um, it's big over there. I didn't realise how big in America the college football is, but we don't get it over here. And I do have an NFL game pass that um, uh, Jim is helping me out with. Jim Strover. I don't know if you're watching, so thank you for that, Jim. I appreciate that. <laughs> you're on M23, M25 and M40 tomorrow. The M23 is a bit of a pain in the road past Gatwick there. M25, if you're going around the Heathrow Way, which I'm guessing you are, Paul, I don't envy you. The M40 won't be too bad, but God, that M25 on a Friday, I feel sorry for you, my friend. Pictures waiting on the phone, running around a car park, yelling, the toilet's opened. <laughs> Last time they were open, Svee, I tell you, I was, I was the, 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 the thing that the, the icing on the cake for these toilets, going back to this whole Starbucks, is they have a sign on the door, right? <laughs> Mrs. Welder Wayne knows what's coming. Stand by. I'm going to try and, uh, how can I get my favourites toolbar up? Favourites, let me click on that. Uh, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just type it in, Google Photos. So they have a sign on the door, okay? Tell me what's wrong with this sign, <laughs> okay? <laughs> a professional company, something's wrong with this sign, okay? I'm just going to type in door, because I've been taking pictures since, like, October of this thing. Uh, and I'm going to try and zoom up. You've got to tell me what's wrong with this door. Are you ready? So this is the, the door in question. There's a sign on that. Can you see that? What's wrong with that sign? <laughs> Who's, who can see? <laughs> That's what I call professionalism, you know? It's professional. I've got so many pictures of that door because I just keep taking a picture every time I'm there. The question about your Cobra Limited build, build. When did you get your numbered stand? I just see my stage and I haven't seen my stand yet. It came a good three months afterwards, John. Uh, it did come a while afterwards, but you can chase them up, but it will come eventually, I promise. You get a discount at Starbucks on the A30s. I'm the nearest neighbour, really. Well, I've got my Starbucks uh, app. So I get free coffees after every 150 points. I do spend a lot of money in there, I have to say. Because I'm not buying stuff for me. I'm buying it for uh, the kids as well. Well, well, Daniel, you know the uh, um, Lego bought out an Eiffel Tower. But I didn't want that blocky look. And to see that Ixo have done one, I'm like, oh, that looks great. I'm still a sprog. <laughs> Any information about XO and the Enterprise notification? Um, yes, didn't you see, Richard? Uh, if you go to fanhome.com, it's all ready to go there. You have to put your interest at fanhome because that one's not ready to go yet, the Enterprise, but it is coming. <laughs> did I have a hard paper round? I did, actually. I had to go for like three miles from where I lived to even start my round. That was when I lived in Pitsy in Essex. Uh,
I'm sorry, I'm just going down here. You need to order carpets for the Ecto-1 in the few months. Hope Mike Clayne has some available still. Well, my Ecto-1, I've definitely got to uh, break apart and just turn that bulkhead around. Once I've done that, then I'll do the last bits and then I'm going to wing myself down to Hampshire. Is that where you live still, Svi, in Hampshire? And I'm going to deliver you a nice working Ecto-1. All the electrics work on it. I just, I'm not happy with the door. So uh, I'm going to sort that out. You're off to see Back to the Fusical, the Musical on the 4th. You're going to love it. Will's Workshop's seen it like six times now, haven't you, Will's Workshop? Might be late, way late with this one, but what happened with the Bismarck? Did you get pleated? Well, it's all completed, and it's got this brilliant rigging on it, which is full of this... It's so... Because of the scale, the rigging is so thin, you can't see it. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I just couldn't. I, I can't bring myself to do the rigging. And it's not the fact of having to, to, to do the tying and linking it up and all that. I don't mind that. But what I do mind is that we have to put rigging points into the model after it's built. I don't understand why we couldn't have put those rigging points in while we were building it. Because now trying to get one of these little tiny bits of photo etch into a section while dodging every other detail. It's just not worth it. I don't want to damage anything. So, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I said no. Hello, boy, how's it going? You skimmed through to get caught up. I've been rabbiting on for the last God knows how long, Roy, so... You know, when, when, once these streams end, I just look back at it and think, what the hell did I talk about tonight? <gasps> I can't say hell. Oops. YouTube have really clamped down on, uh, on bad language. So I've got I've to watch what I say. I definitely can't use any curse words in the first 15 seconds because that's a baddie. You get a strike for that. So uh, <laughs> I've got to be a good boy. I very rarely swear on this channel, I have to say. <laughs> it should be. Chris, you should you should push that idea. Will Megan's sequel be called Spare? That's brilliant. Wow, you could probably make some money off that. Quick, write to the production company and say you got an idea. And then you can use this video as like, you know, your copyright. I came up with it first. It was on World of Rain stream on a Thursday, the 26th. It's my mum and dad's wedding anniversary tomorrow, if you're watching. Uh, they've been married now 61 years. Can you believe that? 61 years tomorrow they've been married. Absolutely crazy. You liked Crystal Skull? Get out of town! <laughs> You, uh, is this is all a dream, Roy? <laughs> you didn't just say that. That was just a dream. Uh, Wayne, remember, will? Oh, is it? Is it English for William? I didn't know that. Wow, William. I suppose it is. That's how the the, the end is pronounced, William. William. Wow. Okay, that makes sense. T2 was better than T1. I agree. Aliens was better than Alien, I think, as well. Uh, the old Russian tanks are so outdated, the current ones just laugh at them. <laughs> oh, bless. It's going to be shown on BT Sport. Well, that's handy. I've got BT Sport. I wasn't aware of that. I will check that. There you go. Yeah. Who spells apologise like that? And you know what? It's the same... Blinking, blinking. I'm allowed to say blinking. It's the same blinking sign that's been up there since June last year. So every time they close those toilets, that same sign goes up. So much so they've laminated that sign on the front door. <laughs> I, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that that meme. That's brilliant. Is it because the toilet's flushed the opposite direction? No, I don't think so. You know what? I've seen staff come out there. So I don't know if staff have got their own toilet or if they use the customer ones. But I've seen them come out. You know, like when you've been in the toilet, you dry your hands, but they're still damp. So you're, you're going like this. I've seen a member of staff go out like that. And it's like, oh. But now, where's they in those pictures there? You saw chairs were pushed up against the door. Now they've actually locked the door with one of those special keys, which have got like a, looks like a cog. And you'd have to turn it round. But uh, we'll find out tomorrow why why they've been closed all the time. No idea. <laughs> Your friend's playing in the Back to the Future musical. That's crazy. 
I've got um I've got someone who works in the industry as well, Paul, that used to know the old cast of Back to the Future musical. I wonder small world sometimes. I'm telling you. Uh something to watch again. The workshop surprise for Wayne. You'll have to link it, Ian, in chat. Uh yeah, no swearing. Also, the YouTube is the Snoop Dogg video. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> uh, you agree about that, Bismarck? Yeah, I mean, it's just too tiny. And you know what? I I did buy, so you probably saw some of the rigging line for it, but I just thought, nah, move on. You shouldn't swear anyway. I try not to. <laughs> it's got to the point where I'm stabbing myself with screwdrivers and I'm not swearing balls. I'm getting there. It's when I'm scanned, it's, it's when I slip with these. If you watched the Patreon stream last night, I slipped with the screwdriver, and I was so lucky it didn't go into me because we almost had an accident on stream. But uh, six to eight years, five years uh, this year for me and Leslie. It's five years for me and Esther as well this year. I think five years. Did we say it was wood, Mrs. Rodaway? Five years. You need to buy something for wood. Five years is wood, Robert. Hi, well, I hope you're good. I just want to ask uh, your followers if they got Eleanor Bill Kit 50 and 55 spare. If you, uh, that would be, is that all you need to complete it, uh, Dink? I think as the collection goes on, now it's on Fan Home, you might start to see them come back up. So my suggestion would be to go on the Facebook site and ask there. Uh, what's Rumble? Is that like a, a competition from YouTube? I don't know. Need to invest in spelling for the staff. <laughs> it's crazy. 3D print yourself a toilet key, mate. I'm the I'm the, I could do, couldn't I? I'm the guy who's like because I know they're going to be closed now. I I train my brain that the, I'm not going to be using the toilets. What's disheartening is where I sit there, and I see old older people coming in, and even some disabled people as well wanting to use the toilet. And they didn't see the sign. They're pushing and pushing and it won't open. And then this the dismay of realising, oh, they're closed. And it's like, I don't know why they're closed. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm, I guarantee there's nothing wrong with them. But uh, ah, it's just crazy. And the other thing is, because there's not toilets there, in Starbucks, you used to watch, see, people on their laptops or writing or doing work in there while they're having sandwiches and drinking coffee. Great business for Starbucks. But since they've closed, who wants to stay in there? If you're going to be filling your body full of liquid, but you've got no way to release that, what do you do? You go. So, I don't know. <laughs> um, you're thinking of getting a 3D printer at uh, some point. Have you had uh, much experience 3D? Yes, I have on resin printers and uh, filament printers. What would you say would be the best thing to do post print for a smooth finish? I was thinking some kind of putty or sanding maybe. You can get these uh, filler primers now they're pretty good and then you sand them down some of the um the car filler body um filler as well is quite good to go on it as well uh, you want to speak to people like Sfi in chat who's been building an r2d to and built uh, a proton pack from ghostbusters they can help with things like that last two packs of mirrors were small i've got a mirror pack here and it is tiny as in i don't know what's in it but it's a tiny box uh no swearing? How Australian? <laughs> fair dinkum. It's a fair cop. Don't come to Royal Prawns with me. <laughs> 38 years for you and the boss. Wow. Uh, you got a big one coming up in a couple of years then, Edward. That's brilliant. I like, I like hearing things like that, Edward. That makes me happy. Uh, that is right, that's all. I asked them, but no one answers, to be honest. I think it's because no one's got it at the moment, and we're, and since uh, everyone has been up in the air of what's happening with Eagle Moss, it's hard to get an answer for that. But as that starts up again, I think you will start to get answers for that. Uh, of course, when that starts up, there's no harm in trying Fan Home to see if they can send it to you. Uh, wood filler. There you go. Svee said wood filler. There's an idea. I tried wood filler when I was building a, a BB-8 once, V, and, uh, oh, God, it was a pain to file and sand down. Absolute pain to sand down. In the end, my, my homemade BB-8, what I did was I got a... I don't, did I ever put this on the channel? I don't think I did. I think this was before my YouTube channel. I got a beach ball. I put paper mache uh, uh, over the top, and then I smoothed it with wood, 
No, I didn't. I'm trying to think what I did. Then I popped the beach ball inside. So I had this perfect ball. And then I put wood filler around to smooth it out. But I wood filler was just a pain to sand. So I couldn't get a nice smooth thing. And in the end, I threw it. <laughs> oh, it's not all gold on this channel, I tell you. <laughs> Thank you, Bear. That's why I think it's funny. I've, I'm, I'm celebrating Australia Day in the UK here when all the Australians are in bed. And it's the next day for them. <laughs> Take care, John. See you later, mate. It is that time. It's gone quick tonight, hasn't it? You swear a lot. <laughs> My missus can't talk on here. Then she's Irish. Every sentence has a swear word. It's just punctuation to her, folks. You got to. Uh, I've got to be careful on YouTube. It's not so bad once you're in the video, but the first fifteen seconds, you really got to. Uh, you got to be good. But that was a that was a fun stream. So uh, tomorrow it's going to be the tumbler out, and then I think from Monday next week I'm going to be doing the Porsche Box Seven for Magora models, and then uh, I'm not sure. We've got all I've got here now left is apart from the Enterprise I'm building is Agora model stuff. So uh, have to see what I'm building next. But uh, listen, thank you all for joining me tonight. Uh, I'm going to have some fun with the uh, uh, Starbucks tomorrow. I'll let you know what happens with that. Uh, it, it, no matter what happens, I'll be sitting there having me coffee. So, And uh, I will see you uh, next week. Take care. Have a good night.